Has the crypto market officially bottomed and is this the end of the bear market? This seems to be the question on everyone's mind right now as Bitcoin is beautifully breaking out to the upside, but there's also a couple of altcoins which are up hundreds and hundreds of percent already like LDO and Matic. I mean, these are absolutely flying right now. But one of the most crucial things to look at is the Nasdaq Bitcoin correlation, which is also breaking out. Now, it's no secret that Nasdaq and Bitcoin have been correlated at around 85 to 80 percent for almost the entirety of this year. And Nasdaq is one of the largest indices of the world to so where it moves. A lot of other things tend to like to follow it and look at the direction that it's taking. So since Nasdaq is breaking out, Bitcoin is breaking out and a lot of the altcoins are certainly breaking out. I think it's time to break this down and also check out everything that is happening in the news because there is a lot of really positive fundamentals that are also happening here as well. So welcome back to the channel. My name is Brendan and this is the Crypto Analyst channel. If you're new here, it's great to have you. And if you are a reoccurring member, it's also great to have you here on this beautiful Friday. Uh, as I said, let's go ahead and get started with the technical analysis first, and then we'll dive into a couple of these really important fundamental, I guess, news findings that have happened over the last 24 hours or so. So with Bitcoin, Bitcoin actually just broke a very crucial level of resistance. This has been a fairly like common and easy to tell zone for Bitcoin, where it has just been ricocheting in between support and resistance and support and resistance back and forth. And this was really no surprise because this is what we have done on repeat, where we have just been bouncing in these zones before moving downwards. However, this one tends to look a little bit different because of the way that it is forming. Um, most notably, we broke above the 50 day moving average on the daily time scale. This is unique because we didn't do this in the previous, I guess, consolidation zone. And we didn't even get any candle body closings above this since we have ultimately broken below like $50,000. I mean, the last time that Bitcoin was above the 50 day moving average with candle consolidations was back in April of this year. So months and months ago. So it's nice to see that with Bitcoin moving back upwards, it's not only broken the 20 day moving average, the 50 day moving average, but also as we'll take a look at here in just a second, the 200 weekly moving average and the top resistance of this consolidation zone. Now, I've been a big advocate that if Bitcoin can break out of this 50 day moving average, there are two very likely zones that I see it moving to. Now, number one, I see it moving to this first little bit of previous candle body, I guess, bottoming from the Terra Luna situation, which is just right around $25,500. And above that, I think that there is the real resistance that's going to be a little bit closer to like $28,000, which is the previous bottom of that consolidation zone. Now, this is actually something that I have been going over with the Crypt Nation crew. So if you're a, a member over there, you're probably already familiar with this information. However, with this breakout happening, this is a really, really good sign for Bitcoin. So what I want to take a look at next is the weekly and the monthly chart, because this is really good news to see that Bitcoin has officially broken back above the 200 weekly moving average, because ever since Bitcoin has has had the 200 weekly moving average on its chart, it has always been a bottoming indicator for where Bitcoin will bottom. Doesn't matter if it's 2014, 2018, 2020. It has been a consistent bottom zone for Bitcoin. So with us being back above this zone, all I really want to see now is a weekly candle body closing above this. And I would feel a lot more comfortable. And one of the other things that we have been talking about is this beautiful triple bullish divergence on the weekly MACD. And then the weekly and monthly RSIs being right at their prime bottoming zones for where they have bottomed out at almost every major Bitcoin and crypto bear market in history. Um, and so this is just an example of the weekly chart. And then if we roll this over to the monthly chart, you guys can see just how kind of simple and laid out this is. Um, the charts look very familiar. Uh, it's a clear bottoming area that Bitcoin and the crypto market likes to bottom at. So would I be surprised if there is a bottom here? The answer is ultimately no, but I think it's still too early to say whether or not Bitcoin's bottomed. I think if anything, we're seeing a really, really nice bounce right now. However, 
in order to determine a bottom, I think we need to see some sort of higher swing low. And I think we'll see that once we start hitting major resistance and start falling back down in price action. And then if we can have a nice rally and, and really a bottom off of Bitcoin from that area, then I would feel pretty confident. So maybe something like that could look like is if we continue to move up, we hit resistance and we come back down and we bounce off this area really, really well. And then we form a higher swing high then that's where I would be like, okay, this could actually be the potential bottom of Bitcoin. But that's not to say that there are not a lot of resistance levels above us. Again, we've been in a bear market now for, for really quite some time. I think it's been maybe seven, eight months already. So if it's going to be a bottom, there's still a lot of resistance above us and there's a lot of resistance levels to break. Now on NASDAQ, we talked about this very important resistance level breaking. This was just a local resistance. We had already used this as resistance a couple of times previously. And I think the even more important thing to note is that NASDAQ held on to that 200 weekly moving average uh, very similarly to how Bitcoin did. Now, Bitcoin actually ended up breaking this level. NASDAQ never did. In fact, this has been the zone and I feel like I mention this every video, but it's really important. But this has been the zone where NASDAQ has held every single time since the 2008 crash. And guess what it's doing right now? It's bouncing and it is flying to the upside right now. So a really, really nice bounce. And that's exactly what you wanna see. But again, that doesn't mean that it's out of the woods yet. So it is breaking local resistance. It's breaking its 200 weekly moving average and holding that rather. And then it's also breaking out of the 50 day and the 20 day moving average. So significant areas that were previously used as resistance on NASDAQ. We can see over here with the orange line. And then again with the orange line, every time we were rallying up, we were rejecting this area and rejecting this area a number of times. And now we are actually breaking above that. So if you are a fan of what's happening over here, it's a good thing for the bulls, certainly a good argument for the bulls. Now, finally, there are a lot of altcoins which are just soaring at the moment. I mean, LDO from its bottom, if we wanna measure this guy out, it's up around 300% and Matic from its bottom is up nearly 189, almost 200%. So these things are, are moving really, really well. And there's a lot of other coins out there like DOT, which is also breaking out. I believe Link was also breaking out. Um, there's plenty of altcoins that are still yet to move or seeing more milder breakouts, but a mild breakout for altcoins might be when Bitcoin moves 20% or 10%, altcoins are moving 20 or 25%. So it's a great day for the entire crypto market, but let's begin to dive into what's happening over here in the news and what do you know we have more money coming into the world of blockchain and crypto ai based startup optic is actually raising 11 million dollars to put the nf in nfts this is just another form of money i think we do this every single week where we show that money is still flowing in the blockchain and it's still flowing into crypto despite us being in an extended bear market some could argue one of the worst bear markets that crypto has ever experienced. Yet there are still tens and hundreds of millions and billions of dollars coming into this industry because the big money knows that it's not a short-term play. Not to say that, that, excuse me, not to say that there are not short-term opportunities, but the big money acknowledges that there's a lot of long-term opportunity as well. Additionally, the Sandbox is bringing on a security firm brand shield to prevent the rising nft fraud this comes after you know to no one's really surprised there have been a number of scams in the nft i guess space or industry whatever you want to call it and with that sandbox is trying to be a little bit proactive and try to stop it before it even happens uh, and really kind of take this time in the bear market to make sure that all of their nooks are in a cranny and they can be prepared for the next bull run because in the previous bull run NFTs went wild. And I think they're just trying to be a little bit more prepared this time around. Now, the sudden rise in EVM compatible ZK rollups is a, a rather new thing that we're seeing pushed, or at least the start, they started getting pushed at the beginning of this year, I would say. They existed well before that, but this year they have been all over the news, whether it's Immutable X or a ton of other platforms uh, trying to implement ZK rollups. They are certainly on the rise. In fact, this is what this week's, this coming week's Crypt Nation newsletter is, is going to be about. 
So if you're not familiar with ZK rollups, essentially what they do is they combine a large number of layer two transactions off chain, and then they resubmit them on chain in a single transaction, which saves a lot of, I guess you could say like time and gas and things of that nature. So it's able to make things essentially get through the chain faster by, by rolling them up for, for lack of a better terms. And that's the, the high level overview of it. But this is an industry to, to keep an eye out on. Um, there's a lot happening in this ZK rollup and EVM space. So if you're not familiar with it, you know, I don't want to spend an excessive amount of time on it, but this is a really good article to help you get caught up. And yeah, there's a lot happening over here. Now, Coinbase stock has popped at nearly 10% as cryptocurrencies have begun to recover. Things like Bitcoin and Ethereum, and we already looked at them. I mean, Bitcoin's on a tear right now. It's already up 3% on today. And from its bottom, it's up, I mean, what is this? Almost 37, 38%. So is there any secret that one of the largest exchanges and publicly traded companies that is tied to crypto is moving up with the crypto industry? Uh, you know, obviously Coinbase stock has taken a pretty big hit, but so is every tech company and every crypto based anything. So I don't think it's to anyone's surprise that cryptocurrency was down a lot with the crypto market and with the tech industry. And now it's moving back up with tech, um, really to no one's surprise. But it's good to see that Coinbase stock is recovering alongside a lot of cryptocurrencies as well. Now, finally, French banking giant BNP has fully announced that they are going to be entering the crypto custody space or so maybe it's not fully announced yet but it looks like they are going to be entering into the into the crypto space this just goes to show that more traditional sources more large money institutional sources are coming into the world of crypto or in the least they're interested with it i'd like to always get at least one or two of these every single video to show that number what no excuse me number one big money's coming in and institutional or excuse me, <laughs> words are hard sometimes institutions are still very interested in cryptocurrency and blockchain as a whole so the adoption is still there the interest is still there the money is still there so i don't think it really matters what price is doing in the short term people get so caught up in what's happening in the short term price that they don't pay attention to what's happening fundamentally behind the scenes and understand what big money and big institutions are truly interested in and if you can find that out and you can figure that out and acknowledge that and get rid of all the fear and the fud then you're in a lot better of a place because you know where the big money wants to push the industry so with that being said we're going to go ahead and round up this video and bring this one to an end it's a great day for crypto across the board cryptocurrency is just flying right now uh, i know you know, if you bought the dip at all, your portfolio is loving it. Um, hopefully a lot of people sold the top and bought the bottom and not sold the bottom and bought the top. But nonetheless, cryptocurrency is still very, very low right now. I'm excited to see where these next resistance levels for Bitcoin are going to be. But that being said, we're rounding it up here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next video.